Meg is Not Alone by Megan Hill, illustrated by Samara Hardy. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. John 13, 34. Church was over. Meg and her mom and dad were getting their coats. Meg's coat was red with shiny buttons. It was also very high up. Meg stood on her tiptoes to reach it, but she couldn't. Then she jumped and her fingers just brushed the sleeve. The jump also pushed her into the coats. She jumped again. It was dark and warm and a little scratchy in there. From between the coats, Meg could hear her parents talking. Their voices sounded quiet and fuzzy. I think I'll walk home, her father was saying. It's good to finally see the sun again. Her mother said, sounds good. I can take the car. Meg rubbed her hands on the furry coats. She heard her father say, so you'll take Meg home? And she heard her mother say, are you taking Meg with you? But she didn't hear anyone answer. When Meg came out, she saw her red coat still hanging on its hook, but her mom and dad weren't there. Meg tried to be brave, but she couldn't help it when a tear slipped down her cheek. She felt alone and afraid. The next time the door opened, Meg heard a familiar voice. Meg, what are you doing here all by yourself? It was Mrs. Hughes, Meg's Sunday school teacher, with her baby, Robert. I don't know where my mom and dad are, Meg said. She didn't mean to cry, but her voice sounded kind of squeaky. Robert wasn't crying. He was blowing raspberries. Oh, Meg, said Mrs. Hughes. It's okay. We'll find them. I left my phone in the car, but I'll ask to use someone's phone, and then we'll call your mom. Meg started to feel a little bit better. The next person to come in was someone else Meg recognized. It was the man who played the piano every Sunday while everyone sang the hymns. Mrs. Hughes asked him to call Meg's mom on his phone. After a minute, Meg heard him say, Hello, is this Meg's mom? Yes, Meg is safe. She's here at the church with Mrs. Hughes. There must have been a mistake. Then he held his phone up to Meg's ear. Mom, Meg said. This time her voice didn't sound quite so squeaky. Where are you? Oh, Meg, she heard her mom say. I'm so sorry. Dad and I must have gotten mixed up and we both left for home without you. I'm going to call Dad right now and have him go back to get you. While you wait, Mrs. Hughes and our church friends will take care of you. I love you, Meg. While Meg had been on the phone, Mrs. Hughes had been busy getting help. Soon, people started coming into the room. A teenager came in with a box of tissues so Meg could blow her nose. A woman came in and gave Meg a bottle of water and a bag of cookies. Those are from the pastor's office, she winked, but he won't mind. A man came in with a stack of storybooks from the Sunday school room. I thought you might want to look at these while you wait. Meg was hardly sad at all now. And when baby Robert began to fuss, she even made a silly face to make him laugh. In no time at all, the doors opened again. It was Meg's dad. Meg! he said, and gave her a big hug. I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Meg squeezed his neck. Then she looked around at all the people who had helped her. Mrs. Hughes, who first helped her not to feel alone. The man who shared his phone. The teenager who brought tissues. The woman who brought a snack. The man who gave her the storybooks. And all the people who had come to make sure she was okay. I'm fine, Meg told her dad. I'm really fine. Meg's dad reached up and got her coat from its hook. 
I'm sorry you were left alone, he said, but I'm thankful you weren't alone for long. God took care of you. God? Meg asked. She was confused. She had been thinking about her new church friends. Yes, her dad said. God gave us church friends to take care of us. When we are alone or scared or need help, the people at church are our friends. They love us because they love God, and God shows his love for us by sending them to help. I'm a church friend too, Meg said. I made baby Robert smile when he was sad. Meg looked back. I'm glad I have church friends, she said. And then Meg and her dad walked home. The End